Today, we will answer a geometry challenge given by one of our followers. And the question goes like this. Given a right triangle right here with a side length of x plus y and y plus z with a hypotenuse of x plus z. Now, x, y, and z are all integers. And if y plus 4 equals to z, also, c is greater than x. Then the question is, what is the value of the ratio of z and x? Now, you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. But before I show the solution, the answer to this question must be equal to 3 over 2. Now, the question is, how do we get 3? over 2. Now let's start the solution. Alright, since we have a right triangle right here, so we need to use, of course, the Pythagorean theorem. And Pythagorean theorem states that it, the sum of the squares of its leg of a right triangle must be equal to the square of its hypotenuse. So we have a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. Now applying this Pythagorean theorem to our given right triangle right here, so we have x plus y quantity squared. So this x plus y, this x plus y right here, this serve as a. And this y plus z, this serve as b. And the hypotenuse, of course, x plus z will serve as the value of c. Now first, let's simplify first the value of x plus y quantity squared. Now if we do that, we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. Now, let's expand y plus z quantity squared. If we do that, we get y squared plus 2yz plus z squared. Now, let's expand the last term which is equal to z plus x or x plus z quantity squared. If we do that, we get something like x squared plus 2xz plus z squared. Now, notice that on the left side, we have x squared. On the right side, we have x squared. We have also z squared on the left and z squared on the right. So we can cancel out x squared and z squared definitely. This is just 0. So we have now 2xy plus y squared plus y squared plus 2yz equals 2xz. Now we can combine definitely this 2y squared. Now if we combine this, we get 2y squared. Now, all of the coefficients of the variable is a multiple of 2, so we can cancel out all of these 2s. And now, let's rearrange this term x, y, and y squared for some purposes. Now, using this given that y plus 4 equals to z, so we will use this now. If we subtract 4 on both sides, we get the value of y as z minus 4. Now, we can see a lot of y in our equation, so we can replace all of this y with z minus 4. So, we can replace all of this y with z minus 4. If we do that, we get z minus 4 quantity squared plus x times z minus 4 plus z minus 4 times z plus xz. Now, why we do that? Because, take note, our goal is to find the ratio of z and x. Now, let's expand z minus 4 quantity squared. If we do that, we get something like z squared minus 8z plus 16. Now, let's distribute this x to z minus 4. So, we have xz minus 4x. Also, this, let's distribute this z to z minus 4. So, we have z squared minus 4z. Now, at this point, take note that we have a common term of xz on the left side and xz on the right side. So, we can cancel both of them. This is just 0. Now, this z squared and z squared, we can combine this. This will give us 2z squared. Now, all of the coefficients are now multiples of 2. So, we can divide all of these coefficients or all of this term by 2. So, we have 2 divided by 2 will give us 1. 8 divided by 2 will give us 4. 16 divided by 2 will give us 8. 
4 divided by 2 will give us 2, and 4 divided by 2 will give us also 2. And of course, 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So we have something like z squared minus 4z plus 8 minus 2x minus 2z. Now, let's combine the common term which is negative 4z and negative 2z. If we combine this, we get something like negative 6z. Now, let's move this 2x to the right-hand side. And now, z squared minus 6z plus 8, this can be factored because this 6 is just negative of 4 plus 2. And this 8 is just 4 times 2. So we can factor the left-hand side, z squared minus 6z plus 8, something like x or z minus 4 multiplied by z minus 2. And this is equal to 2x. Now since we're dealing with integer value of x, y, and z, so we can say in this equation that z minus 4 must be equal to 2 or z minus 2 equal to x. Or we can do something like in reverse. So we can say that z minus 4 equals to x or z minus 2 equals 2. This is our primary case because take note since we're dealing with integers, this x can be a multiple of 2, can be a multiple of 3, and so on and so forth. So we will do that later on. Now let's do the first case. If z minus 4 times z minus 2 equals to x plus 2, so we can say in this picture that z minus 4 must be equal to x, and z minus 2 must be equal to 2. Now, let's do this case. Now, clearly, we can solve for the value of c if we add 2 on both sides. If we add 2 on both sides, these 2 cancel out, so this will give us the value of c as 4. Now, since z equals to 4, so we're going to replace this z as 4. So this will give us 4 minus 4. And the value of x must be equal to 0. Now, we have the value of x equals to 0 and the value of z equals to 4. Now, let's use the given information to solve for the value of y. Now, take note that y plus 4 equals to z. So, since z equals to 4, so we can replace this 4, so definitely y must be equal to 0. Now, this case is impossible. The reason is one of its leg of the right triangle must be x plus y. So, we have 0 plus 0 is equal to 0. So, one leg must be equal to 0 and that is impossible. So, this case is not possible. So now, let's disregard this case and let's move on to the other case. Now, let's have z minus 4 must be equal to 2 and z minus 2 must be equal to the value of x. Now, let's do that. So, solving for the value of z, if we add 4 on both sides, if we add 4 on both sides, this 4 cancel up, so z must be equal to 6. Now, since we know the value of z, we can replace this c as 6. So, 6 minus 2, x must be equal to 4. Now, we have the value of x and z. x must be equal to 4 and z must be equal to 6. Now, using again this condition that y plus 4 equals to z, we know the value of z must be equal to 6. So, meaning that y must be equal to 2. Now, using this case, so the first side of this right triangle must be x plus y. So this is just 6 because we have 2 plus 4 or 4 plus 2 rather. And this is just 6. Now y plus z must be equal to 6 plus 2 or simply equal to 8. Now x plus z, this is just 6 plus 4 or 4 plus x. This is just 10. Now take note. 6, 8, and 10 is definitely a side length of a right triangle. This perfectly fits to the Pythagorean theorem. Therefore, we can say that the value of x must be equal to 4, the value of y must be equal to 2, and the value of z must be equal to 6. 
Now, we want the ratio of z to x. So, we have 6 over 4. Now, if we simplify this, we get 3 over 2. Now, take note. This is the only solution to this question. And as always, we are done.